that first night, uh, I would say would have been uh, uh, the quintessential first night <laughs> of anything, because people came and had no idea where it would be. But what they, uh, and, and the other thing to remember is that first performance was the first time we went through it without stopping. You know how you're supposed to do it at the dress rehearsal? You're supposed to say, okay, let's do it without stopping. We won't stop. We never did that. We never had reached the point where we could do it without uh, fixing a music cue or a lighting cue or a dance cue or a, or a spoken word cue. Something had to be fixed. So the first night we got through it without stopping was that night. <laughs> this, is a, this is the kind of thing that Bob and I were doing, and it didn't make any sense. But, you know, fortunately, it didn't make, if it made any sense at all, probably the piece wouldn't have worked. We were, we were resolutely nonsensical from beginning to end, and yet the, the, logic, of the, uh, uh, the logic of the piece was, uh, uh, was pervasive and undeniable. See any of those baggy pants, chuck the hills. And if you know it was a violin to be, answer We're the used to seeing opera in theater that has narrative and tells stories. And where action is following the music or action is following a text. Uh, it's something that you can easily comprehend, or understand. Uh, here, it's, uh, it's a work where you go and you can get lost. And uh, that's the idea. It's like a good novel. It's a, yeah. You don't have to understand anything. University of Michigan has, a, has had a very important music department for, in terms of contemporary music for a long time. Uh, Well-known composers like Bill Balcom, uh, William Albright, have been important national composers, and they lived and worked there. Uh, what you get also, what, is, in the, you get a young audience. These key, kinds of pieces, they, they appeal to a younger audience because the language is fresh. Why is, the question is, why is the language still fresh 40 years later? Because people just never did it. I was in this prematurely air-conditioned supermarket, and there were all these aisles. And there were these bathing caps that you could buy that had these kind of Fourth of July plumes on them. Red and yellow and blue. And I wasn't tempted to buy one, but I was reminded of the fact that I had been avoiding the beach. The whole quality of delivering that text is a little bit dreamlike. It's a little bit like how you would talk to a very close friend on the phone, you know, because it's just strange information. You know, I was in a prematurely air-conditioned supermarket, and there was this and this and this and this. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of a level of very intimate and not very, um, I don't know, just sort of dreamlike. So I like that, and I like thinking about her in that in the kind of state she, she was in. I went to the revival at BAM some years ago, and I was there for, for the opening, and then I went back a week later, and I walked down the aisle, and there was an empty seat, and I sat down in the empty seat on the aisle, and Arthur Miller was sitting next to me. And after about 20 minutes, he turned to me, and he didn't know who I was, and he said, uh, what do you think about this? I said, I don't know. I, said, I asked him, I said, what do you think? He said, you know, I don't get it. <laughs> I said, you know, I don't get it either. <laughs> the day with its cares and perplexities is ended and the night is now upon us. The night should be a time of peace and tranquility. A time to relax and be calm. We have need of a soothing story to banish the disturbing thoughts of the day, to set at rest.